Welcome and a very good morning to everyone uh, tuning in to us to our Market Insight for Q3 2024. Uh, thank you for joining us on a Thursday morning. Uh, we have a pleasure to uh, welcome you again to our uh, quarterly market updates. Um, we had a success in the mid-year review that we did uh, back in July. We had over 150 um, participants joining us here in Phnom Penh um, at Oakwood Hotel. However, we love to uh, keep doing these online sessions um, in between the in-person uh, presentations so that uh, those of you who are overseas or couldn't join us in person can still um, keep in touch in the uh, with the market update that we provide. So I'm um, uh, really pleasure to um, keep seeing that uh, there's still people tuning in our online uh, webinar. Okay, so without any uh, further ado, um, I'd like to kickstart our presentation today with the um, introduction to the agenda. Um, today, myself, um, Kesa, I will, oh, I will cover the uh, overview of the economics and um, commercial real estate market, namely retail and office. And my colleagues, uh, Mr. Dara, who is our uh, manager of research and consulting services, will cover the hospitality and uh, residential sector, and we'll proceed to the Q&A to welcome um, any of your questions that you may have. So um, you can even pop in the question while we're presenting uh, using the Q&A box in this uh, Zoom format. So I'd like to kick start with the um, overview and especially with our uh, regular dashboard that present commodial economics indicators and real estate indicators. At the macroeconomics overview, uh, we are looking at the um, forecasted GDP growth rate of 5.8% for Cambodia in 2024. And this rate is projected to grow um, to 6% in uh, the following year. And we'll talk a bit more about this um, uh, in this section. Next up is the um, tourism indicator. Uh, Cambodia welcomed international tourist arrival up to 4.3 million just in, within eight months of uh, 2024. Obviously, that this is a recovery compared to uh, last year. However, there's still a little bit more to catch up um, compared to the level that we had in 2019. On the investment side, we saw that um, there has been a two point, uh, almost $2.2 billion worth of um, investment into construction been approved uh, within uh, this eight, first eight months of 2024. This um, a volume of investment, however, showing a slight drop compared to 2023. However, we see uh, a growth in other part of investment outside of real estate and construction, which we will also talk about in the following slides. Onto the uh, real estate market, we are looking at both commercial and residential uh, property indicators here. In the commercial space, you can see that um, there's an encouraging sign in office occupancy, uh, where we see a slight growth in um, taking up in office space. However, uh, retail space, um, continue to suppress in terms of um, uh, occupancy rate, whilst the rents, prime rents for uh, prime projects, um, especially within the um, city center for office and uh, prime shopping mall uh, rent remain relatively the same compared to last quarter. In the uh, residential market, we seeing uh, more activity coming up in uh, the condo market. We have seen up to 970 units launched just within the past uh, six, uh, sorry, three months of um, um, 2024. And um, high end uh, sale price, however, continue to uh, drop slightly. In the landed uh, property um, segment, we still see new launches up to uh, 250 uh, units. Uh, how, although um, it's a major slowdown if we compare to last year, for example, and even uh, the year before. Uh, single uh, villa uh, is still uh, being sold at around $1,177 uh, per square meter. This is a slight uptick uh, compared to last quarter. We also love to um, present, uh, you know, the key highlights and stories that we see across uh, Cambodia as well as um, across the world where we find it relevant to uh, Cambodia. 
uh, main headline that we are uh, looking at right now, including uh, key stimulus uh, policy that we're starting to see, uh, especially in the major economic like um, US and China, where interest rate is um, getting cut for the first time in four years. Uh, China's uh, central bank are also um, relieving or um, issuing more policy to um, stimulus the uh, purchase and um, trading in real estate market again. Um, however, we still seeing that on the uh, market side, uh, looking at the developer side, both in China and Hong Kong, uh, developers are still offering major discount, hoping to clear out their uh, remaining uh, inventory. Coming into the um, investment end, especially in uh, Cambodia, we see that there are more activity, especially uh, taking up in uh, Sihanou wheel. Within that, if you look at um, the uh, title within the uh, middle of this slide, uh, government have uh, um, approved another study projects incentive in addition to uh, what they have done in the past. So cumulatively, right now we're looking at um, over 140 projects receiving a special incentive within uh, Sihanou wheel. We're also seeing more and more um, uh, policy uh, activity uh, from the government, especially regarding uh, real estate. We're seeing that uh, the regulator, uh, regulator now are very active in uh, denouncing uh, illegal property development or development without licenses. Uh, we also see the uh, Ministry of Land Management um, launch their uh, digital platform for land registration and other public services. We understand this is in a trial session, but however, we um, would like to congratulate um, uh, Ministry of Land Management for this uh, very big move. And uh, we foresee that this is a really helpful tool uh, if when uh, becoming officially launched uh, will help ease a lot of uh, issue within a real estate uh, transaction, especially regarding the uh, transfer where, you know, uh, just to take uh, quite a bit of time or quite a long time and incur a lot of fee as well as the uh, transparency is quite uh, low. However, when it comes to a digital platform, we hope that this all of this issue will be eliminated. In the um, tourism aspect, we're also seeing uh, more activity regarding um, digital um, um, initiative where Cambodia launched um, our e-visa, e-arrival card um, for uh, passengers. We also see uh, more movement into the infrastructure, uh, major infrastructure such as uh, the new airport as well as the um, groundbreaking of uh, Funan Daichu Canal, um, hoping to further ease the uh, trade and uh, tourism movement within uh, the country and connecting to our neighboring countries. We're also seeing an uh, uh, increase in a minimum wage for 2025. Uh, uh, re receive an up, uh, bump of uh, up to $4 for uh, factory workers, especially in uh, garment and footwear industry. And uh, many other um, uh, headlines that we couldn't cover here, but I wish to highlight uh, one last headline uh, that uh, just came out recently, um, actually just um, toward the end of uh, September, uh, our Cambodian government has issued um, further tax breaks on uh, real estate to help boost the real estate transactions and uh, consumption within real estate. These uh, taxes are uh, uh, including a stamp duty tax, um, exemption on unused uh, land tax, exemptions on a penalty of uh, late registration and late tax payment, and uh, many others uh, also, as well as um, capital gain tax uh, for the delay into uh, the end of 2025. Actually, um, uh, our research team are writing up a summary on uh, this uh, tax policy. Uh, so watch out and uh, uh, stay tuned to receive uh, our tax summary on um, this particular incentive. So thank you. I'd like to move on to uh, another uh, important slide uh, talking about Cambodia GDP growth. Uh, we're presenting here are the uh, projected GDP growth for uh, main uh, country, especially in APAC. Asia Pacific. Uh, within this, this is the number that we um, collected from uh, various sources. But uh, when you look at uh, Cambodia, uh, standing at the top three um, highest growth in terms of uh, projected growth for both 2024 and 2025. What is also uh, very interesting to notice is that Cambodia is the only country 
um, within APAC that have a uh, higher growth in 2025 compared to 2024. The rest are uh, major economies. However, they're facing a slower growth uh, coming up in 2025. I also like to uh, point out though that um, the according to the IMF, uh, uh, International Monetary Fund, although Cambodia is expecting higher growth in 2025 up to 6%, we're still also facing a number of challenges, including a high uh, debt to GDP ratio, for especially for private debts. Uh, we're also facing um, uh, increasing fiscal uh, deficit due to the drop of uh, tax collection, um, of course, leading to uh, um, causing by the uh, drop of consumption, as well as the um, ongoing uh, rising of uh, NPL or non-performing uh, loan that are piling up in across um, many commercial banks. So these are ongoing uh, challenges that we have to deal with in a Cambodia economy. I was encouraging to hear that uh, the growth for next year is still uh, very positive. Next up, um, we also like to talk about uh, interest rate cuts as we highlighted in the um, opening slide. Uh, we're starting to see major um, central banks starting to drop their rates. Um, this is exciting news because uh, in a very long time, we we starting to, we always see um, uh, interest rate or growth, but this is the first time in uh, four years that we're starting to see major um, central bank uh, drop their interest rate, uh, including uh, US and China, but also other major banks like um, Singaporean, uh, European uh, bank, as well as Indian uh, central bank. For Cambodia, we haven't yet uh, to receive any data of the forecast um, of uh, interest rate at the end of 2024. Uh, this is something that we will uh, monitor closely and hopefully um, uh, commercial rate uh, in Cambodia will follow this uh, central uh, bank rates as well. So it uh, will help to spur more activity in uh, not only real estate investment, but also economics um, activity uh, overall. On the um, tourism sector, as we um, uh, informed earlier, in the first eight months of um, 2024, we saw an uptick in um, international tourist arrival up to uh, 4.3 million. As you uh, as we presented here, this is an uh, equivalent to a 22% increase uh, compared to 2023. However, we still um, have a bit of catch up to do. Uh, in order to catch up with the level that we used to achieve in uh, 2019. In terms of uh, uh, the origin of this international tourist, we see that uh, Cambodia received uh, major tourists coming from uh, Thailand and Vietnam, up to 55%, uh, while only 14% of the tourists are from China. This is um, presenting a lower um, purchasing power as we uh, can assume uh, as compared to uh, what we see uh, um, experiencing in Vietnam and Thailand where majority of uh, tourists are coming from uh, either Korea or China making up a quite significant amount up to uh, like nearly half of the total tourists. So there are a lot of more work uh, needing to be done especially in terms of the P uh, public uh, relation and marketing for um, Cambodia tourism uh, and this is a joint effort uh, between, uh, needed to be a joint effort between uh, our government and private sector all together, as well as um, uh, say, uh, related associations and um, entity. Moving back to the um, investment side, uh, we're presenting here, uh, this, this is the number from uh, Council for Development of Cambodia, namely uh, CDC, where um, they publish um, the data of uh, approved investment in uh, Cambodia and projected that there's a growth of um, uh, further growth in 2024, uh, where we can be uh, quite um, optimistic about, because this is the first time that um, uh, total in, uh, approved investment in uh, Cambodia will hit a five, uh, 5 billion map uh, for the first time in a single year. So uh, the projected um, investment 
up until 20, uh, the end of 2024 is projected to uh, accumulate up to 5.5 billion, uh, representing a 13% increase compared to uh, 2023. And uh, the uh, more encouraging news is that uh, the investment is going into a more productive sector, especially uh, industry sector, where we see uh, quite a true jump. And actually, only uh, first eight months of twenty four, we also we already see a three point three uh, billion dollar worth of investment approved uh, within Cambodia. The source of fund, if you ask me, is coming from uh, majorly uh, up to ninety percent, uh, over ninety percent, coming from China and Cambodia. It is encouraging uh, to see that there are more Cambodian-based investment uh, rising up within the country. I was also concerning because uh, if you look at the diversification of this source of investment, it's still concentrate uh, just between a Cambodian investor and China a Chinese investor. On to um, uh, investment, but into uh, specifically in construction uh, sector we see a slowdown um, as we described in the last quarter as well, where we see that uh, um, uh, combining uh, this previous slide and this slide together, we're seeing a trend of uh, investment being directed away from construction and real estate, moving into industrial uh, agriculture and tourism, where uh, for us as CBRE, uh, this is probably not a, uh, necessarily a bad sign after all, because uh, in the past uh, five years, uh, starting from 2019, we, we saw a number of, um, sorry, uh, actually starting from 2017, we saw a huge uh, growth in uh, construction sector and real estate sector, resulting in a, a, a rapid growth in the supply that uh, even right now, uh, the market is still dealing uh, with a high vacancy rate and um, absorption is still catching up with the uh, supply. So slowing down in a construction sector is probably a healthy correction for our uh, market in the meantime, uh, not necessarily a, a bad sign after all. And hopefully this um, investment, new investment injecting into productive sectors such as industrial, um, tourism, uh, agriculture, will generate uh, more consumption, uh, generate more jobs creation, and um, eventually would lead up to the consumption in real estate space, whether it is in a commercial or residential space. Uh, within the Phnom Penh specifically, our um, CBRE team have uh, done um, our, uh, refreshing our green net uh, data on uh, you know, uh, building that are under construction. Within that, we track up to uh, 370 uh, projects. We might not cover all of it. Um, we might miss some. So, uh, however, it is still uh, showing that there is a significant amount of uh, construction ongoing uh, within uh, the capital city of uh, Phnom Penh, especially in um, district like uh, the central district like uh, BKK, uh, Tukok, uh, Chumkamon, and even San Sok where uh, numerous activities is still ongoing. And uh, noticeably, we think that uh, this activity are mainly dominant by a residential sector, uh, followed by a commercial, and then the rest are uh, other segments. These are some of the uh, phases of a new project completed within um, 2024 and upcoming in uh, 2024. We're seeing uh, a number of projects, including uh, commercial office such as um, KLK um, and uh, residential uh, and mixed use projects like um, Wujum Town, uh, new projects by uh, Borei Peng Hood, um, Borei Chulasan come from a new developer, as well as uh, more expansion uh, from established developers such as Urban Village, um, Picasso, and uh, Times Square. Uh, last but not least, uh, for the overview of uh, economic, we'd like to uh, close this section with an optimistic uh, note, where um, following MCHAM's um, survey of uh, MCHAM member within Cambodia, uh, whether they want, uh, they're expecting to expand their business activity uh, and whether they expect their income to grow within uh, 2024 compared to 23. We're seeing that um, overwhelmingly um, the a majority of the respondents um, representing uh, 
uh, various industries saying that they're expecting a growth uh, within 2024 compared to 23. Within that, uh, we highlighted uh, within real estate and construction up to uh, 76 and 77 percent, respectively, of uh, respondents expecting uh, their income to uh, grow compared to uh, last year. And um, this business and a uh, member of MCHEM also indicating uh, their expansion, their purpose to expand their business and hiring more employees within um, eight, uh, the 12 month, next, next 12 months as well. So this is a, a very uh, positive sign uh, for the economy. And uh, again, um, uh, while real estate is not a um, direct beneficiary of this expansion, it will eventually lead up to uh, more consumption and more demand of a uh, uh, real estate space, whether within a commercial or um, residential uh, arena. So without um, further ado, uh, I'd like to close up the uh, overview um, section and uh, proceed into commercial real estate, uh, beginning with a retail segment. Within the uh, retail uh, real estate space, we still think that um, uh, in 24, supplies continue to grow. Uh, especially uh, noticeably within the um, retail podium uh, segment, where we're expecting uh, supply to almost uh, to actually uh, double compared to uh, retail segment, sorry, retail podium in uh, 2023. In this quarter also, um, our team has uh, revisited uh, the uh, supply pipeline that coming up in 2024 and review their um, completion date. And we have revised uh, some completion date. And uh, as you can see, uh, this revision is presented here. So within 2024, we're seeing some uh, project uh, moving into uh, 2025 uh, as, um, as high as uh, 60,000 um, square meter of uh, retail space um, projecting first projected to be completed in 24, uh, now moving into uh, 2025. And the uh, supply for uh, 2025 projection also being moved. Uh, reason for uh, this uh, revisit is that uh, we still see that a uh, retail project experiencing um, difficulty in launching, uh, not due to um, construction speed only, but also uh, due to the uh, take up rate and absorption. Um, um, as especially now uh, that uh, their major uh, shopping mall and major retail podium uh, within close vicinity with each other, making it uh, more difficult for uh, smaller projects to um, attract uh, tenant, especially uh, international uh, retail brands. Within that, um, as expected, uh, we continue to see um, occupancy in retail space continue to struggle, where um, quarterly um, uh, chain uh, indicating a slight drop or relatively uh, similar to uh, last quarter and quite a, a big drop compared to uh, last year where occupancy stood at around uh, 65%. Uh, in 2024, Q3, uh, occupancy now only stood at uh, 58%. Um, and on not helping, uh, not very encouraging for um, retail developer also is that we can't be seeing that um, rent continue to uh, adjust uh, further, especially within uh, retail podium and uh, prime high street. Although we saw a uh, significant uptick when uh, in 2023, especially in the first half of 23, where we see a lot of brand uh, getting out of uh, retail uh, format and going into prime high street causing uh, quite a big jump in uh, retail uh, high street brand. However, even now, uh, because of uh, more competition, uh, we can say within uh, retail segment and consumption, um, uh, across the board, we're seeing a rent adjustment, uh, even within uh, prime high street. We still see uh, retail expansion uh, ongoing, although uh, at slower pace compared to uh, last year. And within that, F and B is um, majorly uh, dominating uh, the uh, retail expansion of up to sixty percent of new uh, retail branch open in the past six months uh, uh, within uh, F and B segment. Within that, we have seen some uh, expansion from international brands such as um, Snow Yogurt, um, Haiti Lao, but we also see expansion of um, uh, local brands such as um, Tuakmai and 
uh, a number of other restaurants as well. Outside of the uh, occupancy and expansion trend, we also seen that uh, other than that, um, and landlords are becoming increasing, increasingly flexible with uh, the use of space uh, within the retail projects. Right now, um, um, what we can see is that um, landlords are more uh, willing to adjust the uh, tenant mix within the mall and um, are willing to accommodate uh, even more uh, F&B. Um, given that this is the current demand uh, of the market. Uh, some uh, retail space, uh, we see even wanting to convert uh, some of their space into uh, office use or similar type, for example, um, um, school, uh, weekend school, uh, gym, uh, where, where within um, traditional retail um, center uh, we didn't um, experience. And trend number two, we're starting to see that um, um, retail uh, developer, especially smaller one like a community and a smaller retail podium, um, choosing to focus on specific target market rather than uh, competing in a mass market against a bigger shopping mall. Uh, this is namely a, a common theme that we're starting to see right now is especially for, uh, for example, retail project that's uh, only specifically focused on uh, Gen Z or younger population. There are retail projects that only specifically focus on uh, family uh, purchase, family shopping and visit and consumption. So these are an ongoing trend that we tend to see. And we actually would like to encourage um, a retailer, uh, sorry, retail developer and landlord to become uh, more specialized as well. We haven't yet uh, seen in our market um, retail uh, space that uh, focus on certain segments such as, uh, let's say, beauty, uh, mall or um, electronic mall, for example, these are other options of um, uh, specialty that um, landlord may uh, considering at the moment, given that uh, there are huge competition within the retail space. So setting out um, different characteristics can really um, uh, differentiate your project. And last but not least, we also seeing that uh, landlord are now uh, willing to diversify their tenant mix even uh, further. Uh, whereas uh, previously we can see that um, um, landlords are quite picky or selective uh, in terms of the uh, brands or um, the brand originate uh, uh, of uh, the retailer. Uh, but right now, uh, landlords are more flexible. Uh, local brand expansion are also seen uh, across the board, um, even in bigger shopping mall or in smaller uh, community mall. So this is... Um, uh, encouraging sign, whereas um, you know, um, retailer, sorry, retail developer are being uh, more uh, flexible with uh, and more accommodating toward uh, local brands. On to the um, office market, um, we also seeing uh, a major corrections and moderations of um, a supply completion date. Uh, as our team uh, presented here, we have moved uh, some of the uh, projected um, supply that were first forecasted to um, uh, complete in 2024 and now uh, moving into 2025. But uh, different from um, retail projects where the reason for supply is, uh, reason for delay is majorly um, caused by uh, absorption rate. In office, for example, um, the major um, cost of delay is within the construction uh, speed uh, of a lot of projects. As uh, we can see here, um, we are also starting to see uh, growth wider in uh, grade A office as well. Uh, in 2025, we're expecting uh, quite a big jump in uh, grade A office where we see uh, we're expecting uh, one uh, to two more projects completion in uh, um, grade A segment coming uh, in 2025. Office occupancy rate has seen um, um, a slight uptick up to 4% uh, of growth compared to last quarter. However, um, this rate uh, compared to the uh, same time last year in 2023 uh, is still uh, moderate and uh, adjusted. Rental in um, office uh, segment uh, continue uh, still continuing to uh, suppress, especially within uh, grade A and grade C. And only uh, grade B, uh, CBD, uh, CBD uh, managed to uh, increase their rent uh, slightly. 
Uh, as we also presented in um, the uh, dashboard slide, uh, despite uh, when we look at across the board, um, office rent uh, is continue to adjusting. Um, projects that are located within a city center or in prime location uh, still manage to uh, maintain their headline rent and uh, maintain their uh, negotiation power when it comes to uh, actual negotiation uh, with um, uh, interested tenant. Presenting here is uh, data from uh, our regional uh, CBRE appears um, conducting um, office occupier survey across uh, Southeast, uh, sorry, um, Asia Pacific. We're seeing that uh, cost is the still number one reason for office tenant um, consideration, whether they want, to, uh, whether they consider to uh, renew their office uh, leasing or to relocate their office cost uh, is representing the number one um, reason. Uh, cost association here um, include leasing, uh, rental rate, or even a capex um, a fit out a budget that are representing at the beginning of the uh, moving. This is on top of, to, um, of uh, the location factor. Uh, as we can see, a reason for renewal of um, office lease, uh, also accommodating uh, preferred location as the number two a uh, highest reason uh, choosing for tenant uh, choosing to renew as well. We'll talk a bit more about um, the uh, renewal trend in within uh, specifically Phnom Penh market. As you can see here, uh, we're presenting uh, three other trends that are also happening uh, within Phnom Penh market. Number one is that uh, landlord are now um, being increasingly uh, accommodating toward uh, tenants that are willing to extend their lease. Uh, in addition to um, better rent and negotiated. Landlords are also now offering additional support such as um, packing or even um, concessions on uh, maintenance uh, work uh, for their remaining uh, tenants as well. We also notice um, an increasing, uh, a noticeably absent for a new strata title office. Actually, uh, the last uh, strata title office launch that we saw was two years ago. So this is again, um, we think that uh, this is an um, healthy sign, saying that uh, no more competition entering a certain time title market, uh, uh, given that uh, currently um, occupancy rate in a certain title office is already um, struggling compared to um, uh, centrally owned uh, offices. Uh, last but not least, um, we also see a general department of taxation issue an instruction to uh, clarify on the practice around uh, rent free. Uh, concession that being uh, adopted by uh, landlord as part of an incentive to uh, their respective tenant. Uh, now the instruction also clarified that uh, allowable um, rent-free period, although uh, maybe um, falling into different terms such as um, fit-out period or concession period, uh, are kept at only 10% of the total uh, lease term. So for example, for a um, standard uh, three-year lease term, concession or rent-free period should then exceed uh, 3.6 uh, months of uh, um, the rental period. So this, this um, instruction actually clarify a lot of uh, things for landlord. Uh, it doesn't mean that landlord cannot offer more than 10%, uh, just saying that uh, for tax uh, audit um, reason, this is the um, um, widely adopted or this is uh, official adopted uh, practice uh, issued by uh, GDT. So thank you. This is a wrap for um, uh, present uh, for the market update within the commercial real estate. I'd like to um, hand over to my colleague uh, Dara to carry on for hospitality and residential market. Over to you, Dara. Thank you, Kesa, for the great uh, presentation. And once again, uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining our uh, Q3 2024 Market Insight. And if you have any question, please feel free to drop in the Q&A box. And we will pick up and try to answer some of those at the end of the session. Uh, to continue uh, from the previous session, I'm going to uh, cover uh, first the hospitality market, where our team have uh, picked up a number of supplies in the top tier hotels, 
uh, specifically in the four star and five star ratings. So comparatively uh, to the end of this year, we expect uh, no change or no new uh, five star hotels coming to the market and around 200 plus keys uh, increasing for the four star. And this uh, comparatively uh, to the 2019, the number have increased about 60% roughly. And uh, we all know that um, the hospitality sector has been uh, impacted by the COVID-19 outbreaks and the uh, drop in uh, tourism. And to this day, as uh, Ms. Kessa presented earlier, the number of tourists has not yet recovered to reach the peak level in 2019. And also the profile of the tourists are sort of different from, from the market back then. So probably that's why the number of new hotel, especially in the top tiers market is not uh, increasing uh, significantly. In terms of uh, the price, uh, our team also noticed that uh, there's slight increase, like we can see here, uh, comparing to the Q3 of last year, the price of four star increased about uh, 17%, and uh, five star is about 14%, which is uh, standing at uh, slightly lower than uh, 350 average room per night. So uh, this, or uh, comparatively, in terms of the tourist number, based on the uh, tourism statistic, we also see that a uh, number of foreign tourists coming to Phnom Penh increased about a double. So, which uh, this year, as of the eight months, it stand at 1.5 million uh, foreigners coming to Phnom Penh, while uh, last year, eight months, there was about 800,000 foreigners coming to Phnom Penh. And Close to uh, <clears throat> close to uh, eighty percent of those are for holidays purpose, and around uh, twenty percent are for business purpose. So that probably one of the factors that provide the, the slight increase in price. And on the other on the other angle, if we compare to our neighbor countries like Vietnam or Thailand, the average hotel ADR is around. Uh, uh, 120 plus per night and uh, and the price for five star hotel is uh, something uh, not much different between uh, Ho Chi Minh Bangkok and Phnom Penh uh, these are some uh, trends that we try to pick up from for the hospitality so we see there's a spur in lo local demands but it's more short term uh, especially when we have uh, a, a series of uh, other consecutive uh, long holidays. So some locals are uh, really uh, driving a, a certain portion of demand, but that is uh, short term and mostly not in the capital city, but rather at the provinces. And uh, our team also noticed that uh, hotel chains who have uh, uh, long presence in the market are now considering to unload their hotel portfolios uh, in order to uh, li liquidate uh, for the cash rather than uh, operating, continue to operating. And uh, another trend we also see that uh, uh, amidst the rise of uh, supply of condominium, so uh, some condominiums that completed are uh, operating as daily stays and that somehow have uh, compete uh, directly and indirectly to the hotel sectors, which uh, could could take up certain uh, portion of, of the market share of the market share from the hospitality as well. Yep. For the last uh, section, I'm going to cover about residential market in Phnom Penh, where we will combine uh, three uh, sub sectors together that include uh, condominium landed properties or locally we call borai and service apartment where we cover uh, grade a and b so what we notice is in the this years the the growth 
of uh, completion is actually uh, slower, especially in landed properties and uh, service apartment grade A and grade B, where we can see here the growth rate is uh, falling under 10% year on year. And uh, this is uh, due to uh, a few delays in completion and as well as uh, not a big significant uh, new launch in the last uh, two years. So that's why the number of new supplies is still increasing, but the rate of increasing is not that high. And we think this is, uh, it's, it's for the good uh, because uh, 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 back then when, when the market was good, um, the supply was increasing significantly and the demand growth uh, could not uh, growing fast enough to take up the, the fast pace of the supply growth. So with the growth uh, of supply is slower, we think it's it's a good sign that uh, in at, at a certain point of time, the demand will somehow take up the excess supplies in the market for all subsector and residential. Yep. So on top of the note of the slower growth in supply uh, for this year, we, we expect to see that uh, the completion will continue to uh, grow in a slower rate uh, due to this, there are fewer new launch in uh, condominium and landed properties. As we can see, a uh, condominium uh, witness uh, slower new launch in uh, 2020, basically since the COVID outbreak. And well, from uh, 2021 until now, until uh, 2024, the number of new condo launch per years are falling uh, less than 10 units per, per year. Meanwhile, the landed properties, we also uh, witnessed significant drop in number of new projects launched, especially uh, last year and expectedly for this year, where the number of new landed property projects launched will be uh, less than 20 projects. Per year, and we never seen this number before since uh, two thousand fourteen. Uh, on on the other hand, if we look at the regional, the uh, in 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 the Asia Pacific level, the residential sector actually uh, still attract the investment, especially investment from the corporate levels. So this uh, we are talking to the good uh, residential market in in the mature market like Japan or Australia, for example, or the uh, alternative uh, residential uh, assets such as uh, purpose-built student housing or co-living in the certain countries that are driven by uh, a lot of immigrants such as uh, Australia, uh, Hong Kong or Singapore and so on. So there's a... a kind of uh, different trends uh, where we would see in, in uh, Cambodia right now, we are slower in, in new residential launch, but there's a strong interest in uh, residential investment in the in the region. Yep. On this slide, uh, I'd like to talk about the price where in general, we don't see a lot of big movement in price. In condominium uh, quoting sell price, we see a uh, dropping in the high end and affordable and slightly uptick for the mid-range condo uh, due to uh, new loan projects. Yep, so uh, on here, uh, in, in the current context, it, it seems like price has become the key for, for the new loan projects where the we have witnessed uh, even the the few new line projects, but if they are positioning their price right, they they could still uh gather the the buyers to 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 buy the project. And for condo rent, uh, there's there's not much uh, change, but it it's more sort of positive, especially in the high end and mid range condo rent. And this also uh, uh we will uh present. After that, uh, we also noticed the up, the increase in the residential inquiries and transactions, especially in the rental market. In terms of uh, landed properties, uh, there's not much movement 
It's uh, only a small adjustment, which uh, mostly less than 1%. And this also uh, due to the not uh, much movement, not uh, much uh, new supply or new, or new players in the market. So it's kind of uh, affect the, the price, the quoting price to remain uh, stable. And so this apartment, it's uh, no diff uh, not big different from the uh, condominium uh, price trend. Uh, we witnessed a uh, few increasing due to the, like I mentioned earlier, is the increase in inquiries and transaction, especially in the residential leasing market in Phnom Penh right now. Well, we've been discussing among ourselves, like given the uh, especially the latest new launch projects in Phnom Penh in this year's, where the offering is, it's it seems very good. The price is under 1,500 per square meters. So it, it's very good price and mostly come from established developers. And location is also very good in the capital, uh, capital city, Phnom Penh, which is Phnom Penh. Within the five kilometer from the CBDs. So it's, it's very good for traveling. Our country is freehold ownership. Payment term has become flexible and we still have a good deal. So we've been discussing like where else in Southeast Asia beyond Cambodia, we, we could find this kind of condo in the market. And probably even in Cambodia, let's say in the next uh, five or 10 years, probably we, we wouldn't see this uh, no more in the market. So this this kind of an interesting uh, points in the market, but yet we sometimes forget to take note on that. In the residential key trends, we again, like mentioned earlier, uh, price positioning uh, has become a key to drive the uh, take up result for the latest uh, uh, condominium project, especially. So. If the developer uh, do the do the positioning right, so they might get a better result. If even the market is uh, slowing down, because uh, there's there's always a demand looking to buy the the product with the right positioning, especially on the price. Although it it's it may be difficult for developers, given the uh, developer need to bear the existing costs like land costs or construction costs, which we haven't changed a lot, uh, but it's probably it was to consider, to compare with uh, if you want to liquidate or to get the cash or rather than uh, wait uh, without a uh, big uh, movement in, in transaction. So probably uh, developers may consider to lower the expectations in terms of getting the returns or probably uh, developers need to have stronger capital base in order to, to compete in the in the current market. Yep. Yes, uh, like mentioned earlier as well, we noticed the picking up in inquiries and transaction in residential actually for both um, uh, for both sales and uh, leasing, especially uh, in the condominium and service apartment market. Uh, we think uh, this is because uh, in the last uh, two or three years, the price has been adjusted by the developers and landlord. Like we like we saw in the graph, the price has uh, going down. So it's going down to the point that it gets the responsiveness from the market. So actually, uh, it, it reached the point that the price really needs the target of the demand. So that's why we witness a certain picking up, especially in this quarter of uh, 2024. Yep. Another trend to note in the, especially in the landed property sector, we saw a major uh, top developers are uh, uh, reducing their interest rate. Uh, for instance, a top developer reduce a typical interest rate for developer loan at 12% uh, per year to 9% per year now. And as well as the loan, uh, the developer loan or tenure is uh, increasing from 15 to 17 years now to uh, 19 to 20 plus years. So 
with this and together with the ease of the government in tax break, like um, stamp duty exemption for the under house under seventy thousand uh, US dollar, so it probably uh, could ease uh, to help uh, for the market to help uh, sort of a bit more transaction. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, the last presentation, and uh, we will send uh, this slide to all of you that uh, register with uh, valid email and. We also have uh, in our website, the uh, CBOE Cambodia Research Center. It's, it's a library there where you could find all our re reports, previous report, and uh, you you can uh, freely download there. And we also have the uh, Telegram's channels where our team are doing uh, news round up daily. So it, it would be good to, to get the morning with the uh, highlights news that are relevant to economies and real estate. And if you would like to know worry in depth about real estate market in Cambodia in any specific sectors or any specific area, we also have the subsequent report that uh, could solve, could, uh, could be the solution for you as well. So again, if you have any question, please, please feel free to drop in the Q&A session and, and we will uh, pick up and answer from that. Yep, thank you. And I leave the floor back to Kesa. Thank you, Dara. And I thank you audience uh, for sending in uh, some question already. You're starting to see uh, some question coming in, but um, please come here if you have uh, questions. And you can also um, uh, bump up the uh, questions um by um putting a like or you know thumbs up uh, so your favorite question can um go up and get a notice first okay um i'll let you uh, start off by uh, picking some question to answer so uh, uh, to give that a break a uh, little break as well um i'd like to start first with a um, question regarding uh, grade a office building because uh, uh, it was the area that i um, covered in this presentation so um, a question uh, coming from one of our audience that um, how many grade A office building are there in Phnom Penh um, and can we provide their name? Actually, um, uh, there, there's a data for uh, this. Uh, we can you know, um, um, disclose uh, if you want uh, to know, but uh, right now we are, um, if looking at just the uh, centrally owned uh, grade A office, we have uh, at least uh, four buildings. Um, however, if you include a strata title, we are coming close to uh, 10 building uh, in terms of grade A uh, quality offering. A relevant question also asks, um, how, how much is the rental rate in a grade A office uh, now and how is it compared to uh, last five years? Um, rental asking rental for grade A office currently in both um, um, strata title and uh, centrally owned uh, range in between uh, twenty five to thirty dollar in most cases. However, um, if we compare to uh, last five years, let's say in twenty nineteen, the rate was around uh, between thirty to thirty five dollar asking. So this is um, quite a, an adjustment um, of about uh, fifteen to twenty dollar. Sorry, uh, twenty percent on the uh, asking rent. And uh, we have seen that um, there are also more uh, flexible in terms of other term and conditions um, discussion, uh, offering of car park and so on are also becoming more um, flexible. I also, um, uh, I hope that's the uh, answer uh, your question. And I saw also see another question. Actually, this is on a uh, residential market. So I'd like to see if Dara would like to um, answer this question about um, as an investor, uh, whether this is a good time to invest in a uh, condo, um, considering the resale market is uh, quite soft and you know more supplies still coming up. So maybe um, uh, up to that uh, before other questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, for the resale market, um, it's it, it it's not really stock actually but we witnessed uh, certain uh, some some oh, some uh, buyers who resell at the discounted price 
So uh, in condo market, uh, some buyer actually selling at the break even point, a slight profit, or even sometimes at a loss at this moment. Um, so yes, it's kind of uh, suppressing the, the price. And with the new supply coming, uh, again, uh, we see a uh, increase in the leasing market right now, especially. So uh, because the the leasing price has been uh, decreasing of, over the past uh, few years, so that's why uh, when when the price going down, of course the property can uh, capture a larger pool of demand. So uh, I think uh, this is a this is a good early sign that uh, is the point is about the real demand. So when there's a listing increase, so it means the occupancy increase. So that uh, would ultimately uh, uh, recover back the market. But the question is when, and uh, probably not very soon, but uh, we can say that uh, we see some positive signs. And for occupancy, actual occupancy, uh, we, we don't have the actual data for now. And, uh, and for the question that our audience mentioned about is GAR or GBP is good investment. Again, I think uh, the, the numbers look good, but uh, you need to be uh, cautious, especially understand more about the projects and uh, the developer profile. And again, even if it is an investment product, at the end of the day, it's still relying on the real need, the real demand. So if, if uh, the the GBP, the guarantee buyback or the guarantee rental return really have the, the real needs that would fit into the promising figures and uh, promising occupancy. That that is the caution that investors should consider before committing. So the 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 recommendation here is basically to study a bit deeper in terms of projects positioning the market. And as well as the developer profile. Yeah. I hope that's the uh, answer to the question. Thank you, Dara. Um, if I may add on, I think um, if you were to advise um uh, investors, especially in let's say individual investor at this time, when it comes to um investing, especially in condo market, it all comes down to um you know the basic principles of real estate, um, which is the uh, location. Uh, this is, I, I realize this is probably not the most uh, creative answer, but it's, it's true um, for a Cambodian market or any market uh, locations and product offering um, does make a lot of difference. And uh, despite the um, current uh, slowdown across the board, we can see that um, developers that uh, choose the right the, uh, location to develop are still um, um, able to gather enough support in terms of sales but as an investor, you can uh, you, uh, outside of locations, um, product offering, um, uh, we have to also considering on the price, uh, whether it's suitable with this offering. And as Dara said, um, I think uh, developer profile is really um, important for a uh, current uh, market because we have seen um, some developer with track record of delivering successful projects that still manage to move on forward with their uh, new development, uh, even with a very you know, difficult market. Um, and then uh, the offering of GRR and GBB um, reliability is also depending on how uh, strong um, this, um, you know, the developer as well. So there are a few criteria that um, um, you will have to consider um, as an investor. Okay. Um, uh, we also um, see a question on, um, I think from the same uh, audience about uh, uh, sorry, uh, macroeconomics and tourism market. I think it is uh, worth noting uh, as well that um, uh, we agree that according to the number, the uh, tourism uh, recovery is still a uh, lag behind our neighbors such as uh, Vietnam and Thailand. Although um, in terms of number of um, uh, international tourist arrival, we are catching up uh, at about uh, 70 or 80% of uh, uh, 2019, which is about the same level uh, as um, Thailand and Vietnam. But the uh, spending and the quality of tourists um, 
uh, you know, actually is um, uh, getting, you know, less quality and uh, less spending. Uh, I think this is true across the board when we talk to hotel operator, restaurant operator, they also notice the same. And um, if you ask uh, me as an outsider, uh, sending from uh, outside looking in, uh, uh, whether, you know, what is the issue within the uh, uh, tourism, I think uh, we have been uh, impacted a lot by uh, ongoing negative uh, press, especially uh, international uh, headlines covering about Cambodia in the past uh, four, five years or so. And um, uh, we're only starting to see uh, this negative press um, slowing down this year where uh, a lot of effort have been putting in uh, by the government into you know, clearing and eliminating um, uh, issue regarding you know online scams, um, illegal activities, and safety, and I'm starting to see uh, this this um, negative press slowing down and more um, positive press um, growing, especially regarding a uh, new um, uh, tourist uh, destination or existing tourist uh, destination that weren't um, hit off before. There are more event and activity putting out both by uh, public and private uh, sectors. Uh, into spurring uh, more activity in tourism. So we have seen a lot of success um, really get to uh, domestic tourism. Uh, I think can, we can say that uh, within this year. However, um, for our international tourists, I think there are a lot more uh, PR needing to be done uh, in order to uh, help the tourism sector and um, our operator within the sector. Uh, that, that is um, my, my short answer, if uh, Dara have anything to add on. Okay. It's um, right. Okay. Uh, I noticed a a question about the the question if we are uh, bottoming out in the next two or three years, given that uh, we have high NPR and. Uh, high interest rate. So uh, this is interesting question, and we've been discussed seeing that uh, around that if we are around the bottom. And uh, from our point of view, we think that for real estate market, I think uh, we are around at the bottom. So it probably go a bit further, or maybe not, but it it wouldn't be go uh, significant significantly uh, further bottom. So the, the point, point uh, from here is that uh, how long does this last and uh, when it's going to cover back and uh, how fast uh, it's going to cover back. In terms of the uh, overall uh, real estate market, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's still back by the core sector of the economy. So of course, we have a rise in PLs and slower credit growth, especially in, in this year. But uh, we have some positive signs, like uh, our GDPs uh, remain uh, strong. So 5.8% is expected for this year and 6% is expected for next year. So this actually a good numbers. And our exports, so our economy is... Uh, relying strongly on export, especially a garment product. So uh, our export uh, remains strong. And with the recent interest rate cuts in uh, countries like uh, US or Europe, we expect to see increase in uh, demand for consumer markets. So that is also a good sign for uh, increasing the production and export in Cambodia. And yet, uh, we we'll still wait to see if there's a more diversification, uh, including uh, alongside the increase, if there's a more uh, diversif diversification of FDI from a new uh, country source and the uh, uh, recovery in tourism, both the number and the profile. So I think if if all if uh, such uh, certain key uh, sectors in the economy are recovering, we will. Uh, definitely see the recovering in real estate as well because uh, the business and the people would have more money to spend to circulate in the economy. So yeah, the demand for the real estate either is 
commercial or residential are likely to increase. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Dara. Um, I'd like to pick up a question uh, on um, this question is specifically uh, regarding build uh, empty building across the city and uh, what developer and government can do. Um, however, I want to uh, answer this question slightly um, in a, a more broad, broader sense because um, I think uh, um, not only empty building, uh, I mean, the building that have been uh, under construction or uh, close to completion or already completed, but also uh, building that under operations. Um, uh, when I say building, I mean uh, all the projects regarding, including commercial, residential, and retail projects. Um, there are a few uh, creative uh, way to uh, solve this issue, but of course, not all um, location, not all projects are equal. So a solution may be uh, not looking the same for all the um, of this building. But we have uh, discussed extensively about this uh, topic uh, last year. Uh, actually, if you're interested to read more, we also have a presentations on the three R. Um, repurposing, uh, reposition, and redevelopment of these uh, projects. Uh, that's why we said um, there are multiple things that, uh, that can be done. So for example, if uh, we look at um, um, an, oper an ongoing operating uh, uh, project, such as an, uh, retail projects where occupancy are too low for operation uh, in a suitable uh, location, this project may consider um, a repurposing or uh, repositioning of their projects. Uh, repositioning means um, changing their position, for example, from targeting um, you know, mass market into targeting specific market. Uh, repurposing meaning um, instead of um, using all the spaces for retail, um, maybe the landlord can consider um, changing part of the building or even um, the whole building into other use type, for example, a school, uh, a clinics, or you know, other uh, purposes that um, uh, would fit the demand of the local market, the catchment area. So the uh, these are one example of what uh, can be done. In other part, uh, in other buildings, um, we also experience a number of uh, cases where uh, buildings are meant to be for sale. So it was built for sale. Um, it was built as a residential projects, for example, uh, for sale. And um, because of the soften in the uh, current market, this uh, building cannot manage to sell at the moment. So um, again, given the right um, location, uh, the right catchment, uh, sometimes we would advise uh, the owner of this building to um, uh, looking into fitting out certain part of the building and start operating and generating income um, on this uh, building. So it showcased that um, the, the building has potential and it's also making it easier if uh, they want to dispose this uh, building to a second um, operator uh, that can continue operations or convert it to something else. So um, uh, answer for this question is not um, a straightforward, I'm afraid, but um, there are certain things that can do. Uh, however, it has to be um, considering the uh, characteristic of the project itself. Thank you. Um, Dara, do you have um, another question that you want to pick up on? Okay, please go ahead. Um, yeah, I uh, have another interesting question about uh, if with Cochner Rear Bridge now open in Ponsan Boulevard flyover nearing completion, actually already completed at phase one, is the sign of this infrastructure projects impact residential prices in this specific area of town. Um, I think if we, we look uh, historically, um, uh, cost, uh, Cochner, both Cochner Ridge Bridge and Ponsan Boulevard flyovers are the infrastructures that adding on top of the existing uh, satellite city projects development that um, already uh, are developing there. So actually when these uh, satellite city projects with their um, major 
uh, mega infrastructure projects starting at the early place. The price in the area have already increased. So with this uh, specific uh, infrastructure adding on, I would say it, it, it would not have a significant impact toward price on the residential. Especially, uh, we need to factor also the timing for the market. But of course, uh, there's a lot of uh, new infrastructure uh, lately that in Phnom Penh, the government uh, trying to prioritize the southern area of Phnom Penh to connecting the city to our new airport, which the phase one is planning to complete in the first quarter of next year. So uh, we see uh, more bridge uh, connecting uh, city center to Chubampoy area, which is at the eastern side. And we see uh, more flyovers uh, uh, have been developing and there's a uh, discussing around the topic of uh, railroad or the cable car connecting the city center to, to the new mm -hmm. airport. So, I think a new airport uh, could be uh, a major uh, impact that because the uh, airport gonna bring first gonna bring all the airlines uh, office and accommodation to, to the immediate area uh, close to the airport and as well as the uh, logistics and uh, probably industry as well toward the area so. We, we will expect to see uh, more economic activities uh, toward the southern area, uh, especially once the uh, new airport becoming uh, well operated. Okay. Thank you, Dara. Uh, I'm, I'm time conscious, so um, I'd like to proceed to one last question uh, to close up. But this question uh, is, um, I think it's quite interesting and I'd like to actually combine a few questions that are related um, around um, the investment into Cambodia market uh, with regard to um, transparency, with regard to uh, improvement of uh, regulations um, from the government, whether all of these uh, um, factors important for the investment? Uh, absolutely, yes. Um, so this is why um, we are seeing that um, uh, government, especially in the uh, time that's slowing down like this, um, I think the private uh, sector has trying to make a uh, more and more noise and advocacy, uh, either through you know chamber of commerce, um, um, trade business association, so on and so forth, and government also, especially the new uh, mandates, government are now even uh, more accessible than the previous um, uh, in the previous time. We think that uh, they are hearing uh, uh, this advocacy and uh, taking a lot more actions into. Um, clarifying a lot of uh, regulation, issuing more regulations and standards, as well as um, 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 offering incentive, such as, for example, the uh, tax incentive that we see recently in order to um, facilitate the uh, transaction in the business environment, not only in um, uh, real estate and construction, but in um, other sector as well. However, in um, real estate construction, uh, we have seen some uh, good work being done, um, especially in this year. And uh, actually, uh, one news that I think we missed you uh, cover in our presentation is the um, settlement of uh, older building, especially around uh, Don Peng area, where you can see the stack of um, older flat houses uh, from uh, the 1950s, 60s, 70s. Uh, are becoming uh, old and uh, and maintain uh, because of lack of maintenance and uh, the ownership um, situation within this building are also quite complicated. And I think uh, uh, the recent um, uh, news of uh, government um, settling issue a policy to settle uh, this uh, building is a significant milestone um, that uh, can improve you know not only the um, uh, safety concern but also the uh, ownership concern of this. Uh, building occupier as well. We're also seeing uh, uh, more activity around uh, health and safety issue uh, within uh, the construction sector as well. However, again, uh, more work needed to be done. And we also see uh, active, very, very active um, PR activity from 
uh, the uh, invest, uh, ministers and uh, even prime minister himself being very actively outing there uh, promote uh, Cambodia as an investment uh, destinations in uh, uh, many countries uh, from Europe to US to East Asia. So considering all of this sector, um, answering to the last question that we have whether we expect to see more investment, I hope to see uh, more investment coming into Cambodia and especially into the um, sector that uh, produce, uh, that create jobs and uh, create uh, consumptions and uh, support export uh, for Cambodia. So hence uh, improve the livelihood and standard of living of the people in the country and eventually would lead to uh, more demand uh, for real estate space, whether in residential or commercial. So with that note, um, I'd like to conclude our um, market update uh, webinar today. Thank you all uh, once again for uh, tuning in, in uh, this uh, Thursday morning. Uh, we also to like to, um, the right, you may move on to the next slide, share our um, contacts um, of uh, our research team. So we understand there are a lot of uh, questions that we haven't managed to answer uh, during this session. So please feel free to send in your questions and uh, stay tuned to our other publications and uh, presentation uh, in order to you know catch up with the market, but also uh, hopefully we'll answer those questions you may have uh, and we couldn't answer during this uh, presentation. So thank you once again. I wish you um, a productive uh, Thursday and a um, great uh, upcoming weekend. Uh, see you in another um, market update, hopefully in uh, January. Goodbye. Thank you.